What Boulevard Quick didn't understand was Fred O'Bain wasn't talking that shit from the front porch. He here, there, moving around. You so street. Oh, I almost had that bitch. You so street that you still out here in the street when y'all going up like this. Y'all numbers is going up crazy like this and you still down this bitch showing motherfucker, yeah, I'm a real nigga. And this is the rap trap. I'm a real street nigga, bro. I ain't like the other fuck nigga, bro. I'm really in the hood with this shit, bro. Real talk, bro. On everything, bro. On God, bro. My soul, fuck nigga. I be right there in the apartment, fuck nigga. What happened, bro? I pull up out that bitch, bro. On everything, bro. I'm gonna get that bitch, dog. Hey, much as I appreciate you fucking with my channel the way you do, if you not moving forward in life, I pretty much fucking failed. I don't gotta ask you if you tired of being broke. I don't gotta ask you if you tired of the co-workers at your bullshit ass job. I do not have to ask you if you tired of the way your family looks down on you. But what I do have to ask you is how much longer you gonna wait to do something about this shit, big on? Call this fucking number. Let's get something moving in a forward, positive, northward direction. Call this number. I told you this. Get your shit together, big homes. The issue with you niggas is y'all think this shit a game, dog. Like, y'all really think this shit a game, dog. The reason why I say real street niggas need to be saluted and shit like that is because niggas is real deal putting their life on the line. That's why I don't feel like Lil Zan and Lil whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying, Lil fucking whatever, you know what I'm saying, these niggas don't deserve to, you know what I'm saying, be on that level because these real street niggas are putting their life on the line by doing this rap shit, dog. I'm trying to tell you something, dog. A basketball player. Let me, all right, let's, let's, welcome back to the Big Facts Podcast. I'm El Conseco. If you do not have your Are You Serious shirts, get your shit together, big home. The shirts go for 20 skull caps. Skullers go for 15. Go to the PayPal. That me forward slash Are You Serious 10. Everything costs $20 but the um, Skullers. The hood, there's, all right. I, I'm gonna break this down. I, I don't wanna. I need to break it down. I don't wanna. I don't wanna step on no toe. But I really don't give a fuck. A nigga know that he made it once he lives amongst white people. Why is that? If I stay in a predominantly white neighborhood, why do? My family and everybody feel, all right, this nigga's up at nine. Like, like, this nigga didn't change since he moved up. Why is that considered moving up? Why do people want you to be, su to be successful but stay in the same place where you are a failure? Why, why would they want that? They... They would want that because you're more accessible. So, at any point in time, if they get tired of you shining, they can extinguish your life. Um, a rapper named Boulevard Quick. I'm going to get this motherfucker up. Boulevard Quick just got shot in a Baton Rouge apartment complex. I don't give a fuck about no... Uh, this is a good apartment complex. Ain't no good apartment complex. Any apartment complex where a nigga get killed at, that's not no good apartment complex, my nigga. Ain't no good apartments. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, we in apartments. Nigga, what the fuck? Everybody know what the fuck the apartments is. My nigga, this is the rap trap in full fucking effect. Let me talk to you, dog. It's a lot of you niggas right now, you trying to make it in this rap shit. 
A lot of y'all got homeboy, cousin, old man, and all that shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You in the hood. Niggas in the hood fuck with you. They really don't fuck with you, you know what I'm saying? But they fuck with, they say they fuck with your music. When you walk up and down the street, they dap you off and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You selling this little bullshit weed or whatever the fuck like that. Little bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's all good. It's all love. Because you petty. You on this level right here. And the shit you talking, you on that soldier slim shit. You know what I'm saying? That real gangster shit. And motherfucker fuck with it because you didn't been up the road. You really about that shit that you talk about. The hood fuck with you because you a real street nigga. Because you've never reached any success worth being envious of, you've never truly experienced jealousy. You know what I'm saying? You've never, uh, you riding on sixes and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, whatever, uh, man, just, you know what I'm saying? You didn't hit a lick, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all up 10 bands and shit like that. Niggas know you finna fuck that shit up. That's hood shit. But nigga, once the world, you had that potential to actually hit on some legitimate shit, you finna, you know what I'm saying? But because you've never experienced that, a nigga can't really blame you for not knowing what to do in that situation. Um, if you don't know the, the background on this story right here, Boulevard Quick is the homeboy of G Money. G Money was killed by uh, NBA Youngboy people. Um, Fred O'Bang was in jail when G Money died. Uh, when Fred O'Bang came out for his two murders or two attempts, whatever the fuck that is. He say, if I was out, that shit wouldn't have happened to G-Money. Letting that be known that G-Money wasn't really about it like that. Understand, if a nigga protects you and his, they don't fear what you going, they don't fear your retaliation. They fear your homeboy. Understand this shit now, nigga. You know what the fuck going on and your people know what the fuck going on. Nigga, you know if them niggas are scared of you or scared of your homeboy. When a nigga gotta come out and say, God damn, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, you, look, I wasn't there, nigga. You know what that is. So, Fred O'Bain come out, and when he say that right there, that obviously put niggas in the mindset of, okay, so you beefing with NBA Young Boy, because you know NBA Young Boy had something to do with it. If NBA Young Boy didn't have nothing to do with it, then you would have clicked back up with him. If, if, if NBA Young Boy had nothing to do with it, then why the fuck y'all ain't homeboys? Let's, let's go and put this shit on the table. They gonna put on the table. They put on the table and talk about it because I, all the, I, I'm not I'm not good with the whole shit. All the, uh, uh, do niggas know who we talking to? No, we don't know who you talking to. Let it be known. Let it be known because and, and you know ah, nah, we worry about the you know niggas trying to keep it from the law. But my nigga, at this point in time, this shit need to come out in the open because it's getting a little bit too out of hand now. You know what I'm saying? It's getting out of hand. It because. I want to focus on these situations where we'll be, we're being killed by the people that we appoint to protect us. But I can't do that because every five seconds I got to do a story on a nigga getting killed. And it's not by Donald Trump's fucking secret service. It's by a nigga that stayed three houses down. The nigga that, you know what I'm saying, uh, had the loud back in the day on the bag. So, this, so, I right, bam, so, Boulevard, Quick, G-Money, Fred O'Bain was all homeboys. Back in the day, G-Money, when NBA Youngboy was broke, G-Money and NBA Youngboy was homeboys. And that shows you what success would do. Motherfuckers become enemies. But if you've never gotten to that level, you wouldn't understand it. Of course, you're going to say, we ain't never going to get like that. We always going to be numb, but you never had nothing. So, you don't fucking know. That's like a motherfucker tell you, if I hit the lottery, man, I... Come on, my nigga. You can't... My nigga, you can't hold down the job. My nigga, you can't... You can't... Like, my nigga, you fucking up a $400 chick. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, my nigga. Stop with that. Now you just a fucking budgeting genius. Shut the fuck up, dog. But the hood... The hood is where all the failures reside. This is the closest thing, other than jail, this is the closest thing to hell. You know what I'm saying? Because all you see, just look outside. All you see is fucking suffering at every fucking turn, every corner. 80-year-old man walking to the store. 
90 year old woman asking for change with no teeth in her mouth. 19 year old girl walking across the street with three fucking kids. 30 year old black man with fucking headphones on trying to sneak on the goddamn bus. Arguing with the fucking bus driver. I did pay. I'm supposed to have money on this fucking bus car. What the fuck going on? Nah, fuck that shit. Everywhere. Everywhere. And if you look at the hood more like a hell, I think you would better, you would be able to better navigate through it. Depending on whether or not you sell dope at your house. That is a direct portal to the darkest place in hell. Because that means that you, in a minute, you gonna go, you gonna go there for real. You know what I'm saying? Those spots where drug transactions go down, those are portals to where you can leave your physical body and go into uh, what uh, Sean calls uh, your astroteric body. Astroteric, that's like your spirit body and shit like that. These are places that you can die easily on accident, very easily. Anywhere where dope is, you know what I'm saying, you can make a dope transaction, those are the easiest places to die. <clears throat> Everything in the hood, this shit is crazy, so the fly is really going, I'm trying to kill a fly, and this fly is on the phone right fucking now. Watch it, look at it, look at it. He finna come on the lens right now. This, this, this how motherfuckers try you, man. If it ain't Aki and Saki, dog, it's a fucking fly. How the fuck I'm supposed to focus, man? But, bam, so they was all homeboys, but Fred O'Bain, this, this what we all about it, about it, nigga. Fred O'Bain got on because G Money died. If G Money hadn't died, I don't know, because G Money was heating up from dissing NBA Youngboy. If NBA Youngboy hadn't made it, none of should be happening. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that a shame? I told you, wherever success, it's kind of, it's like a fucking atomic bomb. This is a care package being thrown down in a certain spot in the hood. And you would think that that would help the hood flourish, but it doesn't. It decimates shit. Look around that whole situation. It's death and destruction. Not uh, motherfuckers living uh, a fucking uh, living their best life and shit like that. Everybody getting along and and everybody coming together and and and, and pooling their resources and shit like that. Fuck no. Whoever got the bag is on us to go get it or go kill the nigga that has it. Whoever look like they finna get the bag. It's and it it's crazy, ain't it? All the heat was on NBA Youngboy because he was the only one who had success. Now that Fred O'Bain and them have success, they're seeing how it feels for motherfuckers that you just crawled out from trying their best to pull you back down. What Boulevard Quick didn't understand was Fred O'Bain wasn't talking that shit from the front porch. He here, there, moving around. You so street. Oh, I almost had that bitch. You so street that you still out here in the street when y'all going up like this. Y'all numbers is going up crazy like this and you still down this bitch showing motherfucker, yeah, I'm a real nigga. And this is the rap trap. I'm a real street nigga, bro. I ain't like the other fuck nigga, bro. I'm really in the hood with this shit, bro. Real talk, bro. On everything, bro. On God, bro. On my soul, fuck nigga. I be right there in the apartment, fuck nigga. What happened, bro? I pull up out that bitch, bro. On everything, bro. I'm gonna get that bitch, dog. Motherfucker doing that shit on purpose. On everything, bro. Fuck these niggas think this here, dog. I'm a real street nigga, bro. The fuck, nigga? And that's the type of shit that, and this is what I'm telling you. This nigga right here is dead. That was his attitude. You go listen to his music. We're going to do a what you say on him, on the Rap Trap. If you haven't subscribed to the Rap Trap channel, make sure you go over there and subscribe because we're going to go crazy. That's, that's the way he speaks. 
That's what kind of level that he's on. All these niggas is on that level. Turn. It's whatever, fuck nigga. It's up there, just like that. The fans champion that type of shit. Now that he's dead, oh man, stop the violence. I, that, I, don't, I don't do that fuck shit. I'm all that goddamn, I stop the violence, y'all. The fuck is you talking about, dog? Stop the violence. Are you serious, my nigga? Stop the violence? Ah, oh, man, dog. Damn, dog. As if, like, you couldn't see that being about this shit in real life is going to lead to this. Any rap nigga that is really about this shit in real life is going to jail or they going to hell. Period. You cannot be a gangster and a rapper at the same time. It just don't work. And any of you niggas that's doing that shit, and I salute you. Because I know you're not going to be here long. It's going to be, in just a second, I'm going to be doing a video on you. And I'm going to give you the same energy. Because you are, you know what I'm saying? What is for? What is it for? What is it for? This nigga hasn't even got to the point where he can make money yet. So before he can even sacrifice his life for his family, like somebody like maybe XXX Temptation or, you know what I'm saying, somebody who, you know, the boot game nigga, somebody who sacrificed their identity and, you know what I'm saying, their reputation for some money so their family could live better. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, you ain't even started getting the money yet. Everybody come out, ah, oh, that's a real ad nigga, that nigga real as fuck, but you also hear about real street niggas Going to the funeral, kissing the mama like they ain't did shit, and that's gangster. You gotta decide what you, you know what I'm saying. You have to decide what you want to do here. Being a gangster ain't really nothing to brag about because being a gangster means you look out for number one. That's what's gangster. I needed this, so I took this. I don't give a fuck who had it. Ain't no rules for me out here. As long as I'm out here, it's all good. I can rob anybody. I can murk anybody. The niggas who went in that house in uh, Cleveland and killed that girl and the father for that dope, those were real gangsters. Those were the niggas that you niggas pretend to be. Them is real, like real street niggas, real gangsters. Like they wanted that shit and when, when a nigga ain't get a dope up, they really follow through with that shit. No rules. When you think that you can hide behind your child, niggas shoot up everything. That's what real gangsters do. So when niggas be with all that rah rah gangster talk, it's like my nigga, goddamn, like that's what's up. And I hope the people around you see the same thing that you really look out for number one. Cause what's gangster is when Alpo went that motherfucker and told on a nigga who killed niggas for him. That was gangster. He's a real gangster. That's what gangsters do in the end. Right before they get they, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to King Erna. Right before they get they honor snatched, you know what I'm saying? They do that type of shit. Everybody was a gangster until they wasn't a gangster no more. You know what I'm saying? So when you give motherfuckers these titles, and we gotta we gotta really start thinking about these titles and what they actually mean. Especially when we come to play with these goddamn white folks. When we come to the table telling these white folks that we have something that will sell, which is our music, we have to be in that mindset knowing like, all right, this motherfucker across the table is not for me. He's for what I have to sell. You know what I'm saying? So, it don't... The only thing that matters to him is increasing these sales. If what will increase sales is me going to jail or me dying, he's all for that. So, you can't look for the label to, to tell you, hey, man, get out of the hood. And they might even... That's game. That's game. That's like the, the, uh, the hood rat bitch that offers you money in the beginning... To make you think that she's not all about money and shit like that. You heard the bitch from the city girls tell you, I ain't gonna ask for money up front because he gonna think I'm just a nothing ass bitch and I ain't got my shit together. When she's a nothing ass bitch and ain't got her shit together. As, and that's what I'm saying. Like, for all these niggas to be so street and shit like that, they damn sure get booed up a whole lot. Like, niggas run that boo game on niggas like it ain't shit. Like, niggas tell you, oh man, I love your music. Oh, where I sign? Shit. You love my music? Oh, goddamn. You a white man too? Hell yeah, I'm a sign. Why I sign it? Shit, yeah. Hell yeah. Smiling. You want me to dance on the table? I can show dance. I, I can. 
You want me to dance? <laughs> You know, like, but I, I shouldn't even bring up, you know, the white folk because that's not what's going on here. I, it, to be real, they're the issue, but they're not the issue. They're the issue on these on these platforms, but I don't hold them to that standard to not be, to not profit off of our pain. I don't, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, I don't put him on such a platform to where I believe that he made a fucking social media site that was going to help fucking black people be kind to each other. I don't put him on that type of pedestal. He was a white boy in college, a Jewish white boy in college. I don't think that he made something that was going to help us. I think he wanted something that was going to make money. And if what was going to make money was us bickering and killing each other, why the fuck would he give a fuck? Why should he? That might sound crazy. But I, I I don't I don't put I don't li I don't I don't do the false sense of security shit like oh everybody's just the nicest people Every, this is just fucking great. it's not like that you know what I'm saying maybe I'm paranoid but I look at everyone as if they're trying to do something and get something from me you know what I'm saying I look at everyone as if they have an ulterior motive for you know what I'm saying fuck with me and shit like that it's just what it is I feel like if I think the worst in a person from the beginning then. I'm better off because at least they won't be able to run shit on me because I'm automatically, yeah, this nigga trying to do something or this bitch trying to do something. So if they actually do do it, I'm on top of it. If they not on that type of shit, then we can get past it. I'm not just going to shun you off, but I'm just not going to, you know what I'm saying? Oh, here you go. No, it's not going to go like that. This is a business. Motherfuckers trying to make money. So if we can't open our eyes and see, hey, man, this shit is a trap. Motherfuckers want you to talk shit and promote in the same place that you have to fucking live in order to make people believe that you get like, that's like, that's worse than selling dope where you fucking live at. You whoop, like, so many of these niggas, these rap niggas, so many of these rap niggas then got their homeboys killed. Troy Al, this is just off the top of my head. Troy Al, uh, YNW Melly, Young and Ace. Maybe not intentionally, but just by being successful, that put a motherfucking target on everybody around you's back. Like, I'm not in your shoes, I need to knock your shoes off. And that's just the hood mentality. As a street nigga, you should understand that. Because as a street nigga, you don't like seeing motherfuckers come through while you out this bitch selling real deal, you know, grams of gas. Motherfuckers come through in a, they ain't got to be nothing stupid. Just in a new challenger, a new charger. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit don't make you feel good. You ain't got no fucking car. You out here in front of the gas station trying to make goddamn $300. This nigga shitting on you, come out with a bad bitch and shit like that. How many times you gonna let that shit go before it actually starts, you know what I'm saying, getting to you like that? I don't like that fuck nigga no way. Because as street niggas, we have to, nigga shit, and I'm that nigga too, what the fuck? But, I, I, that's what I'm saying, I don't put, I don't, I don't put that on the nigga mind. Like, I don't, I don't say that a street nigga gotta be the smartest nigga on earth, like, for him to have to, Hey, man, I see you in the new Challenger, the new Charger. Hey, man, can you show me how to do that? I don't expect a street nigga to do that. That's where the system of white supremacy comes in at. But not directly, indirectly, by giving, by, uh, should I say it, taking the father out of the home and, you know, putting the dope in California, all these things, trapping us inside of our own mind, not in the hood, trapping us inside of our own minds, making us think that the biggest thing we can be is a rapper or a fucking athlete. We don't think about being an engineer, firefighter, or nothing like that. And we always have to live above our means. You know what I'm saying? We, we can't just live right here. We got to live right here when we make this much money. And if you don't make enough money, then steal the shit. Do you know how many niggas in prison right now for trying to live above their fucking means? Not the people that did it for the dope and shit like that. I'm talking about people that were trying to flex the fuck out. They had enough money but had to keep getting more. Just to show what the fuck it was. 
That's the nigga mentality. And I, it's just hard for me to blame Donald Trump for something that a nigga in the apartment did. Maybe it is a trickle down situation and shit like that. My nigga, I chose to go to the mall today. I chose to get up at whatever fucking time today. Like I chose all of that shit. You know what I mean? So for me to up the fire and just murk a nigga on some, but who's to say that this nigga wasn't flexing on some fuck all y'all niggas? Like, because he think he just still, you think you can still talk the same street shit because this is shit you used to talk when you was just a regular nigga. But niggas take that shit personal now. That's a whole nother thing, too. Once you become even, if you have the potential to be successful, niggas start listening to the shit you say a whole different fucking way. It used to be you can talk shit with niggas, whatever like that. Nobody get offended. Have you noticed this? Maybe at your job. When all y'all was like employees, it was all good for y'all to joke around and shit like that. But as soon as you became a shift leader, when you try to joke motherfuckers, gotta walk to the bathroom, you just get a fucked up. Like, what the fuck wrong with this nigga? Your income tax hit. Now niggas getting offensive when you say, fuck nigga. What you think, I'm broke? Bro, we playing basketball, dog. Like, what the fuck? What you got going on? But this is why I'm telling you the three S's. Sobriety, solitude, celibacy. Success is not what you think it is. It's not going, people are not going to be fucking happy. They're not going to be ecstatic. You finally made it. Because all you finally making it means is, they, is that they haven't made it yet. That's, that's all they get from it. So, as you niggas continue to flex in your hood and make the videos with all the niggas behind you with the choppers and shit like that, niggas love me in my city, fuck nigga, and all that shit like that, I salute you, my nigga. I salute you. But understand, I'm coming with the same goddamn energy when it happens to you, my nigga. Believe that. Big Face Podcast. I'm Ayo Conseco. Make sure I hit the PayPal. Make sure I go to the Rap Trap. <coughs> We're going to do a What You Say on um, one of his songs and shit like that. We're going to see what he was really about. Talk to y'all in a minute. Love.